Hello and welcome to the Wednesday Till I Die podcast. Uh, this is the preview show where we get to know a little bit more about our upcoming coming opponents. And with us to tell us all about Preston is Ollie Hargreaves. Ollie, how are you, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me back on. No worries. It's all uh, it's all good. Uh, fingers crossed. We have a different result than uh, than the last time. Obviously, when you came to our place, but I'm not holding up much hope. I'll be perfectly honest. We don't do well at Deepdale. Um, let's start talking about li- this season then. I mean, you set off like an absolute house on fire at the start of the season. Seven games um, at the start, you'd, the, and you'd won six of them, drawn just one, including a win, as we just mentioned, against us, and you were top of the league. Since then, you've played 15 games and won just three and found yourself down in eighth as we sit and record this. Uh, what's happened? Uh, well, to, to be fair, I think I think... You're right there with three and fifteen. It was actually three and sixteen going into the Leeds game, and then to be fair, all um, all hell broke loose on you know fans wanting low out. Um, pretty much, it just it's hard to put a word on it. How how I'd probably describe it in such is we've been worked out about how we play because Lowe's very strict on how he wants to play, um, and we got found out fairly easily. But what? Another thing I'd probably say is at the start of the season, we had quite a few injuries. Now, it may be weird to some people to hear that, you know, you do better with, you know, some injuries that, you know, to to key players. But it kind of forced Ryan Lowe to stick to one way and one way of playing and rather not overcomplicate things. Um, And obviously, since everyone's come back fit, he's kind of, probably overcomplicated a bit more and trying to play um, to the opposition's weaknesses rather than playing to our strengths, um, even if that made, you know, a much of impression. But, yeah, fans weren't very happy. There was a club statement, actually, just before the Leeds game of, you know, the the, the giving low is back in and they hope that, you know... The oh, the dreaded it. board vote yeah. of confidence. I don't know if you play a football manager and those listening, yeah, when you're playing that and you get that uh, that message pop up, you know your times are, are numbered. I'm not sure how that uh, translates into the real world. No, like, but, exactly. Uh, well, and then you get, you get to win against Leeds. So, you know, it's probably worked out for the better for him um, in terms of, you know, how the Leeds game panned out. I'm not too sure we probably would have gone on and won unless... You know, Melia decided to punch Osmaich in the face. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, a win to win, especially against Leeds, who are up there and flying. And to be fair, if we get another couple of results going into January, then, you know, as you mentioned, we are stuck in eighth. Um, you know, we're still up and amongst it as long as we return to the form. You know, who knows this season, but for the past games before it, I, I weren't too optimistic. Yeah, I, I'll, we'll come on to Ryan Lowe in a second. I just want to touch touch on the past meetings. Um, I, I've just been recording the the whole preview, which we'll play a whole after yourselves, and I see them as a pretty you know, a bogey side. Preston are another bogey side for us, and, and Deepdale hasn't been a happy hunting ground at all. We've not won at Deepdale since 2011 on a current run of six visits without a win. Um, 2020 was the last time that we came to your place, ending in a 1-0 defeat. Josh Windass got sent off after 17 minutes, and Barkhusen scored early on in the second half. Like I said, you have to go back to 2011 for our last win. As I said, Danny Barr and Ben Marshall on the score sheet that day in a 2-0 win. Up front for us that day, Mr. Ryan Lowe, your manager, of course. Um, kind of what, what a segue into talking uh, about him. Uh, you mentioned he's had the the vote of confidence from uh, from the board. He's made some scathing comments recently in uh, in the media as well. What what's your kind of what's your overriding emotions and thoughts on the gaffer at the moment? Well, I mean, I can't really speak about it because I don't have my badges, James. But you know. Uh, it, it was it was a bit a bit of a punch in the face, realistically. Um, to almost like he was under a lot of pressure, and you got to be very careful about what you do say when you're under a lot of pressure. And that was probably the worst thing to say. Um, so it, it didn't go it didn't go down too well. Um, but you know, football is a results business, and you know if you get wins like you did against Leeds, then you know. Albeit fans may not be happy with you, but if you start picking up the three points, you know you're back on the right track. So, t- 
to be fair to him, you know, he he do, he he's, he's very he's very outspoken. Is Ryan Lowe? You know, he he likes to say what he thinks in the press, even though you know sometimes it doesn't relay on the pitch. And I think that's why he gets scrutinised quite a bit by North End fans because he does keep on banging on about this brand and. You know, when it's not being played and, you know, you go three wins in 16, fans are going to be like, you know, where's this brand that you've been speaking about? You know, you've talked the talk, now it's time to walk the walk. But, you know, fair play to him if we get three points, you know, or or, or, or kudos to him if, you know, he can walk the walk as well. Um, But, you know, fans just want the results at the end of the day. Um, And Ollie, 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 are you happy with him? Are oh, you happy with Ryan Lowe? I was kind of diverting from the question. Um, <laughs> I'm adamant with him at the moment. Yeah, I'm adamant. Um, you know, we're stuck in eighth. You know, which is a great position to be, but a manager can't go three wins in sixteen again because that's it's relegation form. So if results carry on the way that they were before, then no, but you know, the board's given the vote of confidence. You gotta give him you gotta give him that and just hope for uh, the best. But I'm adamant with him at the moment. Let's just yeah. see how it goes over the Christmas period. I want I wanna talk style of play because Preston are the outlier and anomaly, I think, this season when you look at it, because you're well down there for all the kind of Stats that everyone looks at to to see for you know a team that's playing well. You know possession less than fifty percent, completed passes. We've actually completed more than yourselves. Um, long passes only Stoke have attempted more this season. XG you're down in twenty second, uh, having you know had the the second least shots in the league. Despite that, you have the best goals per shot ratio, so you're clearly clinical. Hence, probably why you are where you are in the in the league. Um, I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be where you are in the league, really. With looking at looking at those numbers, have you just been getting lucky, or are you just clinical in the way that you play? I think it's a mix of both. Um, you know, clinical in the way that we play Osmaic and you know the the goals that we're getting off Miller, the the moments of quality, the kind of trying to having to find something out of nothing. Like you, you look at Alan Brown, who's a roaming eight, you know, he got gets himself forward and he loves a header. Um, and then Liam Miller, our goal against Leeds, it's something out of nothing. So, yeah, our XG is terrifyingly awful. Um, and to be fair, that's why I'm probably happy with the striker that we have in Osmaic because, you know, he's not been given the service, but he's still getting the goals at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, the style of play needs to be changed. It was changed against Leeds, I think that's probably because we were under the cosh a bit, um, and it created a lot more chances, so you know, we're going to have to create more chances, because you're going to need to score, because our defence at the moment, you know we're, we're not we're not the greatest, whereas at the start of the season you know, you probably could rely on the defence a bit more, and that's how I think we probably got away with a bit more and then once obviously their form goes down the bin, you know he, you're not scoring and you're just conceding, so you're not going to win. So the style of play needs to change like it did against Leeds um, to instead of a five back, we're playing a four back. And I hope that remains. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to touch on your, your recent form then. Um, last six games, you've seen two wins, three defeats and one draw. I mean, a heavy defeat against Watford, a uh, 5-1 yeah. hammering, um, followed up by a, a 2-1 defeat at Swansea. And then most recently, as you've just been mentioning, a 2-1 win at, at Leeds. It's funny because, uh, um, you know, there was, I think the Leeds fans were saying, uh, didn't they have a, d- a decent result b- before? And they beat Ips- did they beat Ipswich? Yeah, they beat like Ipswich 4-0. 4-0 uh, yeah. And, and I, I saw uh, Leeds fans saying it would be the le- most Leeds thing to do to then go and uh, and get beat by Preston. And that's exactly what happened. Obviously, you, know, you mentioned a uh, helping hand with that red card that they, that they had. Mm. But yeah, recent form is very up and down, isn't it? Is it just a case of... Which Preston side turns up? You know, you know, they're getting hammered five one by by Watford, and then you know, two games later, and probably only a week later, beating Leeds. It's it's crazy, isn't it, this season? Yeah, I think I think it's 
it'll be it's what team shows up because obviously you've got to have your best players playing the way that they are. But I also think it's you know the way they're played in such a foot in such a sense. Like we weren't necessarily playing our players to their strengths in the old system. It was kind of like shoot we all wanting them in because Low wants to stick to this you know five three two. It's his it's his motto. It's the one he stood by. Um, but you know you can't scave away from playing your best players and your best in their best roles and positions. Um, so you know it's a learning curve, albeit two years in. I think now now it's that ready to vote of confidence that we've had to try and of well he's had to try and change it. And you know if you play your best players in your best positions and best roles and you still get beat, hold your hands up. But if you're not playing your best players in, your, in their, you know, in the roles that they should be playing, then, you know, it's, it's down to you. But it's definitely who turns up on the day. Say, you know, the captain doesn't have a good game, the rest of the team's going to fall apart. So it is what North End team shows up. Like we were dreadful against what, like first half against Watford. I know we were pummeled five one. First half we were superb. We were, we were we were fantastic on the front foot. Everything. And then, you know, they scored just before half time. And then second half, I think they scored after fifteen seconds. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if you saw the clip. So the ball's gone back to Woodman. He's launched it forward. And I know we may see some of like not Premier League teams do it. They have like half their team up there ready to, you know, get the first and second ball. So we lost obviously the first and second ball. Let's not be around the bush. And they played the ball straight. Straight ball over the top, and um, I can't remember his name. I think it's Martins. It's one on one with Liam Lindsay. Just knocks a ball past him, and then obviously slots it in the back of the net. And then at the end of the day, you you two one down. That's a proper log in the fire. So you know it is what team shows up, um, and the confidence has to be there. Um, which unfortunately for Wednesday fans. After a good win against Leeds and having the fans right behind them, it's probably not the best time to play us. I bet you were hoping it was before the Leeds game. Yeah, um, po- possibly. It's uh, although, yeah, it's it, it's weird. Like I said, at Deepdale, we don't win there, so uh, <laughs> it could be. It, you know, the, the five thousand Wednesday nights are probably going in more in hope rather than expectation. Uh, really, when it when it comes down to it. Let, let, Hoping let, one of our players punch yours. Again. Well, I think that would yeah. uh, that would help. Although we had a bit of or, fisticuffs, or fight in between ourselves. I remember Hillsborough, Owen Doyle, and Jermaine Batford getting sent off for fighting each other. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was uh, that was a comical uh, comical episode. That one. Um, although yeah. we we've had a red card ourselves at the at the end, right at the end of uh, the two 0 defeat against Coventry. So we're missing our defender for three games, which is not very helpful at all. Let's touch Bam on the Abbey. Yeah, obviously, yeah, player that played for, for you, yourselves. I can remember you, you told us about him at the start of the season, mm-hmm. and you said he's either he's either all right or really bad. And yeah, we, we've seen that this season. He's yeah, um, he, he's he's either like he can either pocket the best striker in the league, or he can get absolutely destroyed. There's no in between. There's no consistency. It's just whatever Bambo shows up. Yeah, and. Um, he can't play football. I think is what we found. He's, he's a header and he's a kicker. Ball at his feet. I can I can hear his brain thinking. <laughs> uh, I can hear the cogs whirring. It's that it's that bad. Uh, but no, he's not going to be playing uh, tomorrow. So we're uh, we're spared as blushes on that one. Maybe he thought, you know what? I don't want to play Preston, so I'll just get myself sent off right at the end of the game. But uh, anyway, right. In terms of your players to watch, then you have mentioned. Um, one of them already, Alan Alan Brown. He's uh, is your highest rated player on uh, on who scored uh, so far this season. He, he, as you mentioned, he's pitched up with four goals. He's got two assists to his name as well. Pretty much played in nearly every single game for for Preston so yeah. far this season. Plays in just behind the just behind the striker, or that's where he certainly played uh, against Leeds. Anyway, what can you yeah. tell us about him? Yeah, it's it's been. Um... Obviously, Alan Brown's a legend of North End. He's, you know, been with been with us practically his whole career. Well, he's had, you know, two games in Ireland, um, and he's always been shoehorned into midfield. And the last 
couple of seasons, you know, he's probably played a bit further back than he wanted to. Um, he's now back thriving in his advanced role and, you know, where he can roam around just behind the striker. Um, he's vital. He's vital to the club. He's vital to the fans. He's vital probably to the city. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I can't speak highly enough on Alan Brown how he's been this season. You know, he's a complete workhorse. Um, and he's he's just the right player at the right time, and I don't know how to explain it. You know, he's he's always there, even if you don't think he's there. Like even even if you know the game's just passing by, Alan Brown's always in the thick of it, and I think that's what makes him a great captain. Um, and yeah, he's having the best season he has for quite quite a couple of seasons. When I think his best season was under Alex Neil, where he scored about eleven goals. Um, so you know, I, I don't think we're near the halfway point yet. But the way he carries on, he could he could get close to matching it. Yeah, uh, the other one that I've picked out, he's not played in the last two games, but he's your leading goal scorer, Will Keane. Uh, six goals from just nine shots on target this season. So pretty much, yeah. if he hits the target, it's probably going to go it. in. Um, I said he has he hasn't played in uh, in recent weeks. He's been on the bench as an unused sub. Um, is, is that just because he's out of favour, or because I mean, you think if you've got six goals so far this season, you'd be, you know, you'd be your leading goal scorer. You want him on the pitch, surely. Well, going back to the Swansea game, um, which is one we lost two one. Um, I'm actually quite shocked that he didn't play because he was two and two before that, um, and he didn't play him. And I was a bit like, you know, why would you drop a striker that scored two and two? But hey ho, and then obviously after that. Lost, there was a vote of confidence, and we've had to revert to a four-three-three to try and play our best players to our best strengths. Now, Will Keane isn't a sole striker. He he probably prefers to play as a second striker uh, and play as a two. Um, so it's kind of like the formation isn't suited to him in the past couple of games, and that's why he's probably been left out. And I'm not going to beat around the bush. We're not going to drop Alan Brown uh, from roaming behind the striker for Will Keane at the moment because um, I think Brown's undroppable. So I think Keane finds himself in a situation where, you know, the formation probably it doesn't suit him. He did at the start of the season when we were, you know, doing a 3-5-2. But if we're going to stick to a one striker formation, you know, you're probably going to want someone who's not wanting to be a second striker and wanting to, you know, drop into midfield. You're wanting someone up there on the on the back line of the defender, getting them in behind and hopefully, you know, getting shots off on target. But, you know, I think it's just a bit unfortunate for Wilkin at the moment. And, you know, I think he'll be a great squad player off the bench. And technic to be fair, you probably could start him. Uh it just at the moment I think Lowe's just trying to work it out and he's gonna stick to as my itch, you can get him behind as a sole striker at the moment. Yeah, obviously Will Keane, who, who played for us briefly, 12, 13 games back in 2015. I think was, we signed him in January and he uh, bagged a couple of goals but didn't really uh, didn't really hit it off for us. But I, I said that was seven or eight, eight years ago now. Um, Go then ahead of ahead of our game tomorrow. Then uh, what what's your thoughts on us? Because obviously when you played us last time, this, the season had uh, had only just kind of got going. Uh, yeah. Obviously, absolute nutcase of a manager in Cisco Munoz, but he's now gone, and we've got Danny Rowling, who uh, you know he's, he's he's already firmly got his feet under the table, and you know we absolutely love him as as uh, as fans, which is mental when you're looking. You know the gap is actually three points worse than than it was when he actually uh, came in but but yeah what what's your thoughts on us from the outside looking in yeah you've i mean obviously under shishko and i know you mentioned it you know hillsborough on the wednesday they do have great fans but once you're not behind the team and you have so many fans that are against you they're, they're, they're quite a big confidence side wednesday um and I feel like if the fans aren't, you know, behind the gaffer and behind the manager, you're not you're not going to get anywhere. And obviously under Danny Roll, he's you know brought that back. He, you know, he's given I think it's Masaba a chance, who's obviously seems to be doing decent for you already. Um, so yeah. you know, once the confidence is back and you got you got the fans back in, gives a lot of confidence to the players. And 
you know, I, I remember saying to you at the start, of this, I think before our game, I, you were mentioning, I think you were mentioning that you don't believe you're going to stay up. And I was very optimistic about you being there and about because, you know, Wet Wednesday are a big confidence side. And once you hit the stride, you'll be able to get somewhere. You're like North End at the end of the day, you know. If you're struck, we're not teams that have, you know, the greatest players in the leagues. So you need a lot of fans backing to be able to, you know, get to where you want to be. So I think you'll stay up. I still believe that. Um, and hopefully we can kind of not help you on your way um, by beating the lower teams, but, you know, beating you tomorrow and uh, making sure we beat the other teams around you. So it'd be nice to see North End, hopefully up and around the playoffs and Wednesday, probably like 19th. But, <laughs> well, no, I'd, I'd, if you, I'd take 19th now. And absolutely yeah, well, yeah, snatch exactly. your hands off. Uh, that would be, that'd be, yeah, if we can, if we lose, lose two tomorrow, but finish 19th, I'd take that. Um, how do you see the game panning out? Cause obviously you're at, uh, you're at home. We don't travel yeah. very well this season. I mean, this season has been poor, you know, results wise, you know, for, mm-hmm. for, for much of it really, but only one win, away from home, which did come fairly recently against Stoke. Uh, the only other points we picked up on the road was a draw against Leeds United. Um, h- how do you see the game going? I mean, surely you must be going into this thinking, you know, where where next to the bottom, where 23rd in the league, you're at home. It's one of those fixtures that you've got to be looking at thinking we, we can get three points and, and really put a, you know, hopefully sneak back into them playoffs. I wouldn't say that. I think it's probably taking a game at a time. And I think, obviously, looking at the table now, I think the best way to look at a team is to look at the form table. Um, you know, lo- looking at us in eighth, I was on the Swansea podcast before, um, obviously, the game. It was like, you're up in eighth, you know, I'm ex- expecting a hard game. And I was like, you're probably going to expect the easiest game you've had at, you know, the stadium so far. So, you know, you look at the form table and, you know, Wednesday under Danny Roll have been fantastic. And, yeah, you, you, you mentioned know, that. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just mention it now. We're at last six, we've picked up nine points. You've picked up just seven. Uh, two yeah. wins, three defeats and a draw, as I've mentioned, where three wins and three defeats from mm. our, uh, from our last, last six. And if you go to, I, mean, I suppose, Last three is a, is a little bit different. We, we've we've we slipped to sixteen. Um, you're actually nineteenth with just one win and uh, and two defeats. So uh, so yeah, well, there you are. It, I suppose yeah. When you, when you look at that in in the last six and the last three, we are actually ahead of you. Mm, yeah, and I think it's I think that's a massive factor. You know, it's not you, we shouldn't look at a game as if you know you play you're playing against someone who's you know going to be there around the relegation battle because. No, 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 you're going to come here and give us a game. Then Danny Rolls can have Wednesday set up for a win. Um, I think it's probably not the best time to play North End, especially, you know, at Deepdale after a Boxing Day win and, you know, especially the way that it ended with a, like, 90th minute winner and fans going, you know what, I want to go back on, um, you know, if it's like that. So I think there'll be quite a few fans there compared to normal. Um, we usually only get about 12,500 home fans on. Um but obviously, after the Boxing Day show, you're probably looking at 14 as such. And you know, there's going to be 5,000 Wednesday nights there tomorrow. Uh, it'll, be, tomorrow it'll, be, it'll be a great, it'll be a great atmosphere. And I think North End will feed off that, and I think Wednesday will obviously feed off that as well. Um, it's going to be a tricky game, and it's not going to be a complete rollover um, from any side. It's, it's going to be a really tight game. I can't see any see any team, you know. Going, going there and blowing the socks off someone else. I mean, I'd love us to, but I, I, I just can't see it at the moment, especially with the way that Wednesday and Danny Rollers got them playing. But at the same time, now after the game of Boxing Day, if, if we didn't play Leeds and didn't have a fantastic win, I'd probably say you would come and do us two nil or so. But we're a massive confidence side. You know, getting three points against Leeds is huge. And if you play the system we did against Leeds, you know, it's going to be a really, really good game to watch. I hope you're right anyway, Ollie, because, uh, yeah, it's, that's what you want at the end of the day. You, you want a good game of football. You don't want two teams just cancelling each other out. You want it to be end to end. Um, and obviously your team coming out on top at the end. Um, go on, before I nail you down to a score prediction, Ollie, 
uh, where can we find you on all the socials and uh, and, and what's the mm-hmm. podcast called? Yeah, so um, obviously at Ali Hargreaves on uh, Twitter, and then obviously the Butter Pie Podcast on on Twitter as well, and uh, Spotify, Apple Music, and all your uh, good streaming sites. Great stuff. Go on then, Ollie. Give us a prediction. I mean, you can, you can have two if you want. You can go with your head and your heart because, you know, most people like to predict, obviously, a, a dominant win, of course, but sometimes that's not always the case. No, you know what? My head and my heart are saying the same thing. Um, and it is 2 1 North End. Uh, it's going to be a real tight affair. Uh, I think it. I think it'll go down to the wire. I think I think there'll be a late, uh, not not late last minute winner like it was again, but I think it'll be quite late on in the game. I think it'll be really tight, and then, you know, for me, I hope it goes North End's way, but it could go Wednesday's way. Um, I could just see a late winner coming from somewhere. I hope it's North End, and hopefully a little bit of Liam Miller magic like it was, it was before because he's up there with the best wingers in the league. So. I hope you've got a good wing, but good, uh, good full backs ready for uh, a tough game. Pass on that one. I'll, uh, I, I decline to comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you mentioned late goals. We we have scored late goals in recent mm-hmm. weeks or the last yeah. couple of games. We've been on the receiving end of them, but so now it should be uh, it should be a great game. Looking forward to it as well. Ole, all the best for uh, for the rest of the season. Fingers crossed we get three points tomorrow, though, um, and uh, on all the best for twenty twenty four as well. Well, yeah, I, I hope it's three points to North End, but I hope I'll speak to you next season. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Great stuff, Ollie. Cheers, mate. No problem. Cheers.